It's an interesting time because we've had this huge run up in the markets these last six months. Mm -hmm. Now we're going into a, what looks like to be an economic recovery, strong GDP for 2021 with the vaccines being rolled out. Mm -hmm. What are you telling your clients right now? Yeah, and it's it's really interesting when you look at it because over the really up until the last couple of weeks, it's been just a few names. It's things like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon have been leading this rally. But we need to stop thinking about all these work from home stocks and what the economy is going to look like when it reopens. And we start to see an inkling of that when we got this vaccine news out. And so adding to some of these more, I almost want to say more old school names or just your uh, more typical companies might be a really good option here. And for example, we're looking at things like value companies, like your banks are a really good example, where they're paying really good dividends. They're undervalued compared to the rest of the economy. Um, and even regional banks are a really interesting play right now, because especially coming out of recession, it's very realistic. We can see a lot of acquisitions and some of those banks getting scooped up by some of the bigger ones. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good play right now. Well, and, and to your point about the banks, and obviously those are the first First companies we look at when earnings season kicks off every quarter is that for 2021 the expectations a 22 percent rebound in earnings and then you're looking at and this comes from you four percent gdp i mean that those th that just means that this bull market's going to continue i like that you're you know putting some traditional names on your on your chalkboard right now that's exactly right yeah and you want to look at some of those that have hit hard and some of the ones that haven't seen a lot of their rebound yet but you are starting to see investors kind of grab onto this idea that we're going to see all of this big year ahead of us in 2021 and 2022 even. We can see a really good year in the markets. And we just saw investors dump over $30 billion into the stock market last week. And that was on top of almost $50 million the week before. And there is trillions of dollars still sitting in cash. There's still a lot of room to grow, a lot of money that can make its way back into the stock markets. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure you're taking advantage of that and riding that wave up as it happens. Well, you brought up a lot of the banks. Banks and, and especially the regional banks. But what about other value plays? It's almost like what's old might be new again. We had this huge run up this year in the in the home stocks, the stay at home stocks, if you will, your Zooms and your Pelotons. Maybe now we're going to go more traditional. Yeah, and actually a really good way of playing that, I talk to a lot of my investors, rather than trying to pick which companies are going to benefit the most, you can buy a really broad index that's going to own all of your value companies. Like, yeah. for example, the Vanguard Value Index will own all of your big brand name value companies. You can own the Vanguard Midsize Value um, Exchange Traded Fund, and that's going to own things like your regional banks, for example. But you'll also have things like energy or your other value companies in there. So it's a really good way of getting well diversified, good dividend paying stocks. Oh, I'm glad you brought up energy. I want to ask you about that and kind of pick up on that theme because there is con some, con some concern out here with the incoming administration with President-elect Joe Biden that he's going to be tough mm -hmm. on energy, he's going to pull back, and that that's going to have a rough road in 2021. What do you say? It's definitely something we have to keep our eye on. Um, I mean, I think realistically, COVID is probably going to take priority with the new administration. So I would be surprised if they immediately go to energy. Um, so I think there's probably still some headway to go there, but it is a concern. It's definitely something we don't want to ignore. And what about all the vaccine makers? I mean, we've talked so much today about Pfizer and about Moderna. Uh, obviously, AstraZeneca is another big player in all of this. I mean, do we, but it, it, Pfizer's CEO came out today a couple hours ago and said, we're going to have more vaccine than we need by the end of 2021. That kind of news is exactly what we need just to get people optimistic, get people to put their cash to work, get people to open the economy back up. I mean, I think just the news we've had and this kind of reaction that we've had in the stock market is really just kind of an inkling of what we can see as things really start to get the vaccine out there, get people to take the vaccine. Businesses can open again. I mean, it's just going to be this whole, whole whirlwind of positive news to come. And I really hope we continue to hear exactly that. I've got about a minute left in the show, but I want to get to stimulus with you. There's there's more, you know, we're heating up on Capitol Hill now. We're talking about potentially a $900 billion stimulus package. Isn't what they wanted with the $2 trillion on the Democratic side, but something might be better than nothing, especially for the airlines, Courtney. Final thought. Exactly. Yeah. Actually, airlines will be one of the big beneficiaries of that because they, they've had a lot of bailout money. They still need it. They're one of the biggest industries that's been hit so hard. Um, I think the chances of seeing that stimulus, hopefully early in the year, is going to happen, um, especially because we're going to see unemployment benefits are expiring end of year. So they really need to get on that. Mm. I, I agree with you. I think airlines are going to be one of the big beneficiaries. Yeah.